In the previous video, while dissecting mackerel, a significant amount of anisakis worms were found. What is anisakis? Vicious Today, let's learn about anisakis. This is anisakis. If you zoom in with a microscope, their body looks very simple and long. When stretched out, it's about an inch in size, visible to the naked eye. Anisakis belongs to the phylum Nematoda. Nematodes are small, slender worms. Some nematodes live freely, while many species parasit as other creatures. Among the parasites that infect humans, there are over dozens of species. Anisakis primarily parasit as marine creatures. Looking at its appearance, it has a very simple body structure. Which side is the head? Anisakis lacks eyes, making it difficult to locate the head. However, the body of nematodes tapers towards the back, with the rear end being pointed and the front end being blunt. So, the blunt end is the head. Although not well visible with the microscope I have, there is a mouth at the end of the head. Anisakis uses its mouth to burrow into the host's internal walls. It can even puncture through internal organs from within the digestive tract, then attaching itself to the organ's surface. Pretty horrifying, isn't it? And near the head of Anisakis, there is a white area, which is the ventriculus. Because the ventriculus is located near the head, this area can sometimes be used to distinguish the head. Anisakis's epidermis is composed of a collagenous cuticle, making up its outer layer. Thanks to this thick epidermis, it can survive as a parasite in the digestive tracts of other creatures without being digested. Moreover, anisakis undergo growth through a process called ectasis, similar to arthropods and insects. Anisakis is found in the bodies of various marine creatures such as fish, squid, and crustaceans. However, they are only intermediate hosts before reaching their final host, which is marine mammals like whales and seals. Anisakis matures and reproduces in the guts of their final hosts. Interestingly, because the guts of marine mammals are somewhat similar to those of humans, anisakis can potentially infect humans as well. Due to the increasing toughness of the anisakis's epidermis as it grows, they can survive in the human gut without being digested. Fortunately, the human body is not an ideal environment for them, so they typically don't live for extended periods. However, if a person is infected with anisakis, it can lead to symptoms like abdominal pain, vomiting, allergies, etc. So, when consuming raw seafood, caution is advised. Now, how can anisakis be removed? Many people believe that exposing anisakis to differences in osmotic pressure or using acidic substances like vinegar or alcohol can kill them. Some also mistakenly think that consuming alcohol alongside seafood will neutralize anisakis. I placed anisakis in various solutions and observed them. Even after three hours, the anisakis were still moving vigorously. Anisakis is indeed a resilient creature that doesn't die easily. Freezing or heating is the most effective method to eliminate them. Moreover, when anisakis is found in fish, it's often misconceived that they came from an unfavorable environment. But in reality, Anisakis is a very common parasitic nematode found in marine creatures. Especially in wild-caught fish that have roamed the open seas, they're much more prevalent. While farmed fish that are raised on feed are less likely to have anisakis. So, for those concerned about anisakis, opting for farmed seafood is a good option. Lastly, male anisakis release a copulatory spicule near the anus and mate with females. After mating, females lay eggs inside the digestive tract, and the eggs attach to the feces and are released into the sea. The eggs hatch, and the larva parasit as other marine creatures, continuing the same life cycle. This is the life cycle of Anisakis. This is the end of the Anisakis video. If you found this interesting, please subscribe.